Hey guys, it's Paul from Montana. I have here a 1992 Kawasaki KE100. Uh, bought it from a friend of mine for cheap. He said it didn't run well. When I got it, been sitting for a while, and uh, I tried to start it. Went start, checked for spark, no spark. So um, I went through and I dis I disconnected the uh, the kill switch ignition switch as well as the one that's up on the handlebar. Still no spark. So I tested the wiring going to this coil. And uh, the shop manual for this bike says that this coil, this is the, the ignition coil inside the uh, magneto stator assembly, this coil is supposed to be 1.0 to 1.6 ohms and it was about twice that, it was like three, almost three ohms. Um, so I took this out of, the, uh, out of the bike and tested it out of the bike away from any wiring or anything like that. Exact same reading, it was um, almost three ohms. So um, I went online and this part was not available anywhere, non-existent, can't buy it anymore. So I'm like, crud, what am I going to do to get this thing running? Um, so what I did was I rebuilt the coil. You can see it's all got, looks like brand new wire and tape on there. Um, and it's how you do this is uh, this, you pull all the wire off of the coil and measure it. And you don't have to be super precise, you know, maybe... Uh, I think this was probably about maybe 50 or 60 feet of wire came off the original. And I measured that wire again after it came off and it was still the same resistance. So it had nothing to do with uh, shorting out to the housing or anything anything weird going on. So shorting out to the housing should give you less resistance. So it was the wire itself had degraded to that point, probably through heat or whatever. Um, so anyhow, I... I wrote down the length of this wire and I ordered new wire. This is speaker wire um, for, for making speakers or, or any kind of coil. It actually has like an insulation wrapped around it, or not wrapped around it, but it has insulation bonded to the outside of it. That, that you can't see, it still looks like copper wire, but it has insulation around the outside of it. It's the same gauge as what was originally on the bike. So here's the coil that I bought. This is 24 gauge. Um, I guess they call it enameled copper wire. That's what they call it. This was 20 bucks. So I pulled off a section of this about the same length as the original, tested the resistance, and it was a little high. It was like 1.8 or something like that. So I kept cutting pieces of the wire off till I hit um, 1.3, which is nominal. 1.0 is low resistance, 1.6 is high resistance. I cut this wire until I hit it right at 1.3. And then I rewound this coil. You don't have to be just super duper neat with it. You're just trying to fit it on there. So the first row I did kind of by hand, and then the rest of them I actually uh, had this little apparatus that I that I screwed through one of the holes on there, and then I put it on a drill and spun it up. And you want to leave some, you know, out the back end on on your first run to work with. And then when you're done, you'll need some to hook up to the condenser here. So I re-spun it and then I rechecked my resistance and it was good, it was 1.3. And then I soldered the lead that goes to the ground um, uh, uh, lug, I guess you call it, back here. Um, I soldered that and then I soldered this to the condenser. You can't solder enameled wire without sanding it. You have to sand the area that you're going to um, solder very well until it gets down to base copper. You have to get all that enamel off there. So I soldered the grounding lug, which is basically bolted back here, and cleaned it really, really well. Everything back here is pristine. And then I soldered this end on here, and I put a little piece of shrink wrap on. And before I put this all back together, I'm going to put um, probably put some RTV on here to just kind of stabilize this wire from the vibration. So anyhow, I got this all put back together, and I checked the resistance up here at this connector, black wire to ground. Perfect, 1.3, awesome. We're right where we want to be. And then um, I, I put the flywheel back on and I watched the points for what the manual says and I got the points set just right. And uh, then I stuck an electric drill on this nut with the flywheel on it, spun it counterclockwise, watched for spark and I got killer spark, just zap, 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 just working great. So then I put it all back together, um, put some gas in it, jumped on it, this thing fired right up like nothing. So um, I guess, you know, the reason for this video is to tell you if you have a bad coil inside of your um, magneto assembly on an old motorcycle, you can rebuild it. It's not hard. It's 
not expensive, you can do it. Um, here's the old wire that came off that coil. Now, some people would ask electrically, you know, if wire spun in a coil, does, does the resistance change? How does that work? No, it does not change. Uh, it, it doesn't care. Electricity is going from point A to point B. Resistance is a linear function of the length of the wire. This ball of wire here, I actually coiled it up into a little ball and smashed it with the tail end of a plastic screwdriver handle and I put my tester on the leads and it still said the exact same resistance as when it was loaded on onto this coil here. So, so what I'm telling you is if you know the gauge of wire that's supposed to be on your coil and you pull it out to a length that's going to create greater resistance than what you need, then you just clip it down, clip it down, clip it down until it's perfect resistance and then you spin it on to your coil and then you tape it real good with, this is called capped on tape, this is high temperature, uh, very very high quality tape and I put a bunch of layers set on there just to keep it um, protected. Um, so there you go, I hope that's enough detail. I, I don't generally like to um, videotape myself doing things, I'm not really set up for it so I have to explain it to you so that's why there's a lot of detail going on here. But um, and solder it into the condenser and make sure your points are good and super clean and this bike runs like new it runs great so um, there you go thanks for watching and you know I hope this helps if you're uh, having some electrical problems don't be afraid to try this all right thanks for watching